Can I start now? Uh, I'll just give an introduction and then you can start. Okay. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to yet another training program on Bowtie Development. Uh, so our topic for the day is Bowtie Development Process Facility and our trainer is Mr. Thomas Christopher John. I heartily welcome uh, sir to this training and also thank you everyone for joining. Uh, before we move on to the session, I would like to say that um, the questionnaire link is uh, given in the comment box. It is pinned in the comment box, so you can go and uh, post your questions there. And the assessment registration link is also pinned along with that. And if anyone is facing any video quality issue, I would request you to please uh, increase your video quality to the maximum in the settings. Uh, so you'll be able to clearly see the uh, video. Um, from the last um, session, um, some of you were saying that the video quality is really low. I would request you to just increase the video quality so you'll be able to see it clearly. Um, so uh, we'll start with today's session. Uh, I welcome Thomas sir to take the session forward. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Anu. Um, good morning, all. Uh, welcome once again uh, to today's uh, training session on Bowtie Development for Process Facility. Uh, so we'll have a quick uh, recap on what we uh, studied and learned uh, last week. Uh, we'll go through a few basic slides and then we'll uh, move on to uh, development of Bowtie for a Process Facility. So last week uh, we have seen this slide. Uh, uh, these are the eight key elements of a bow tie diagram. Uh, we should start with hazard followed by top event, threat, consequences, uh, prevention barriers, uh, mitigation and recovery barriers, escalation factors and escalation factor controls. Uh, is my uh, voice clear? Yes, sir, it's audible. Okay, thank you. Uh, to start with, uh, we need to uh, first capture the hazard. Uh, hazard is an operation or an activity or a material within the organization. So that has a potential to cause harm to people, damage to asset or business loss or an impact on environment or reputation. And next is the top event. Uh, so top event is the moment when control over the hazard is lost and the hazard is uh, released, uh, such as the release of hydrocarbon like uh, uh, LPG, uh, natural gas, uh, toxic substances, or an energy. So one important aspect is that uh, there might be still time for barriers to act to stop or mitigate the consequences the after effect of uh, the top event. Uh, next, uh, the third uh, key element is threat. So threats are the potential reasons for uh, the loss of control of the hazard leading to a top event. And threat is an occurrence of a condition or a situation, phenomenon or an event, which will release the hazard and cause a top event. So on the left hand side, you will have uh, some examples uh, like uh, the pressure above the operating limits. So that can result in a failure of a containment system, which will result in loss of containment. So moving on to next, uh, the next uh, key element is consequence. The consequences are the effects on people, assets, environment or reputation as a result of a top event. Uh, consequences uh, are unwanted outcome that could result from top event and result in harm to people or damage of assets, uh, the damage of environment or reputation of an organization. Uh, so one top event can have multiple uh, consequences. Uh, 
Uh, on the left hand side, you can see uh, examples. So, in case of a gas release, so that can be a consequence of a flash fire or a consequence of vapor cloud explosion. So, moving on to the next, as uh, so we have seen uh, last week, uh, uh, the next key element is barrier. Uh, so, the barrier is the uh, most important uh, key element of a bote. Uh, so, bote, uh, the key, um, sorry, barriers uh, are two types. One is uh, prevention barriers and other is mitigation barriers. So, uh, prevention barriers are captured at the left side of uh, bote and uh, mitigation barriers are captured at the right hand side of the bote. So, so the barriers, uh, as we have uh, seen last time, so you can see the uh, top uh, picture. So there, uh, there is a barrier you can see as a concrete wall. On the right side, there is a human being. Left side, there is a hazard. So it can be seen as a bomb. So if it uh, gets uh, fired, uh, the concrete wall will uh, have sufficient strength uh, to protect the human being from a uh, bomb or a fire. So the barrier uh, as we have seen, uh, so it is uh, it could prevent or mitigate uh, the consequence of an event or the prevention barrier can prevent uh, the threat causing the top event. Uh, so uh, as we have seen the barriers are the most important uh, key element. So there are various types of barriers, so we can have different combinations. That's what uh, uh, cap, uh, all those uh, combinations are captured in the table. So the barriers can be passive, barriers can be active, it can be a, a human action, human action can be a barrier or the barriers can be uh, continuous. So the exams are given at a uh, right side column for a passive barrier um, we can take a dike wall or a blast wall uh, as an example so it doesn't have any active component it is, physic it is uh, physically present and it prevents the next category is active barrier so active barrier so it has uh, an element to detect and then uh, uh, de uh, decide and then act. So this also we have seen uh, last week. So the process mm -hmm. control system uh, like uh, instrumented protection, uh, protective functions or instru safety instrument system. All these are uh, examples of active barrier. And next is uh, human. So, uh, in any process plan, you will have a control room where uh, the operators are uh, you know, monitoring the various parameters of a process facility and then they take uh, the required yeah. control measures. So, the human actions, uh, yeah. sometimes it can be a standalone action uh, or it can be a combination of an active uh, barrier plus human uh, intervention. For example, uh, there can be an alarm uh, generated from an instrument and based on that alarm, the human would take a uh, preventive action. So it's a combination of uh, active hardware plus human intervention. The next is uh, categories continuous hardware and um, so, example is ventilation system or the cathodic protection system for a pipeline. So, ventilation system, uh, so when, um, when we go inside a confined space, so the ventilation fan will be kept so to ensure that enough oxygen supply is available. So that is an uh, uh, example of continuous uh, hardware as a barrier. 
So the next uh, two key elements are escalation factor and escalation factor controls. And uh, escalation factor, uh, uh, no, which makes a barrier ineffective. So the escalation factors are the situations or conditions or circumstances that degrade or impair or bypass a barrier, so which may lead to partial or full failure of a barrier. Or uh, the barrier is, can be termed as a condition that can reduce the effectiveness of the barrier uh, for which uh, it is designed. So next is escalation factor control. So the escalation factor control is uh, uh, considered as a barrier. So you can consider as a barrier, but it is not in the main arm of the bow tie, but it is uh, one level below the main uh, line of the barrier. So it uh, ensures that uh, the impact of the escalation factor is uh, reduced and the barrier strength is restored. So we'll see more when we go through the example. So this flow chart we have seen, this is a step-by-step -step procedure. So first we capture the hazard and followed by top event. Next we identify consequences or threats. So it the second and third can be interchanged. We can identify threat first and then consequences. Then uh, we capture prevention barriers, left side of the bow tie. And then we capture uh, mitigation barriers on the right side of the bow tie. Then we add escalation factors. So escalation factors and degradation factors are the same. So it, uh, the terminology varies from organization to organization. And then we capture escalation factor control. And then uh, metadata makes uh, the uh, description and details about the barriers. Then that completes the bow tie. Then we can review on a periodic basis. So we go into uh, exercise. So that is the main objective of uh, today's uh, training session. So many of you might have seen uh, this diagram. So in any process industry, you, you can, uh, you would find uh, different types of separators. So for this uh, training uh, session, uh, so I have considered a three-phase uh, separator in an uh, uh, oil and gas uh, field. So this is a pressurized vessel. So the uh, left-hand side, you will see the well fluid is coming inside. And the well fluid uh, from an uh, oil well, so it contains oil, gas, and some amount of water. So in this separator, we separate uh, oil, water, and uh, gas. So the gas, whatever is uh, liberated from this uh, separator, so it uh, it normally it goes to a compressor. So which is running at a particular uh, speed. So the gas is extracted uh, through a compressor. And uh, at the bottom, uh, you have both oil and uh, water. So on the right hand side, so inside there is a vertical plate that is, uh, that is called wear plate. As we know, oil is lighter than water, so it will float uh, in the separator, it will float on the top and the bottom water will get uh, settled. So the bottom will, uh, the water will be taken from the bottom before the wear, wear plate and through a, a control wall, it goes to the next stage for further processing. And similarly, oil will overflow uh, above the wear plate and it comes to the next compartment, oil compartment and through this oil compartment, through a control wall, it goes to the further stage for processing. So, in terms of control, so we have to understand how the vessel is uh, safely, uh, the operation is safely maintained. So, uh, 
in this case so the well fluid will be at a higher pressure uh, than the separator pressure generally so uh, we need to control the pressure in the separator within its limit so when an equipment is designed it is designed for a particular pressure and temperature conditions so for example if this separator is uh, designed for say uh, 15 bar uh, pressure so we should always ensure that the pressure inside the vessel is less than 15 bar so we have a set of controls to ensure that the pressure in the vessel is uh, maintained below 15 bar okay so uh, if you see on the top we have a number of uh, instruments okay so one uh, if you see uh, pt it stands for pressure transmitter okay and then uh, this is a uh, sensor uh, so we call transmitter it senses and gives the signal to the next unit controller okay so this pressure transmitter senses the pressure in the vessel and gives the signal to the pressure indicating controller pic stands for indicating controller and we have given a number tag we call tag number as 102 pic 102 and this controller it gives uh, an output signal to this control valve pcv 102 so this pcv 102 will vary uh, from 0 to 100 percent and it throttles the well fluid coming from the well okay. so if the pressure goes high so the pressure transmitter will sense and uh, it will give a signal to the controller stating that the pressure is going high then the controller will send a uh, closing signal to this control wall and it will uh, throttle it will uh, reduce the opening so that uh, the inflow will be reduced and the pressure will be reduced so it is a dynamic control in case the pressure goes low then again it gives a signal and then the valve will open slightly more and more inflow is uh, admitted so this is how this loop works so we have a transmitter, controller and a control valve. Pressure transmitter, pressure controller and a control valve. So this is one loop for maintaining the pressure. So next step is uh, in case the pressure, uh, this control fail. So uh, this is an instrument, it's an electronic, uh, or there will be electronic mechanical components. So anything can fail. So, so in case this fails, assume that the wall is uh, kept open and uh, so the pressure keeps increasing and this uh, control has failed so what can go wrong the pressure uh, will keep on uh, increasing so it is at risk so we have another instrument called PSH 104 so this gives uh, this also senses the pressure and uh, it gives a signal to a controller plc programmable logic controller and it uh, it opens or closes a shutdown valve we call sdv shutdown valve so in addition to the pressure control valve at the upstream we have an another shutdown valve okay so to give an example suppose as we have seen this vessel is uh, designed for 15 bar pressure it can withstand maximum up to 15 bar so so we have a transmitter here so we can give a set point of uh, say example 12 bar pressure so it can control up to 12 bar so if it fails and if it uh, fails to control at 12 bar so we have another instrument and uh, uh, this instrument uh, is set at uh, mm -hmm. say 14 bar so when it reaches 14 bar it will shut it will give a signal to shut this valve so even if the pressure control valve doesn't work doesn't close we have another shutdown valve at the upstream it will close the uh, it will shut the well flow so that's how it controls on the inlet side so there is one more control if you see at the center of uh, this vessel there's an upward line so that's a safety valve, pressure safety valve. So this is again a mechanical device, physical device. 
it is uh, working against the string. Okay. So uh, we have seen uh, two units, two instruments. One is a pressure transmitter controller, which is set at 12 bar. And another uh, instrument, pressure switch high, which is set at 14 bar. So even if these two controls fail, so we have another control mechanical device, PSV. So it can be set at 14.5 bar. So when the pressure increases beyond 14, it reaches 14.5, this wall will open and it will release the uh, vapor or gas to uh, another unit flare, which is at atmospheric pressure. So we have three sets of control. So three layers of protection we have. So similarly, on the gas outflow side, okay, so this is the inflow side. So the in, inflow and outflow should be balanced. So the pressure will be maintained. So well fluid is coming inside. So the same mass flow should be taken out from the separator. So here for taking the gas out, we have a compressor. It sucks gas from the compress, uh, from the separator. And it is uh, compressed and given to the further uh, processing uh, units. Okay. So normally, so the compressor will be running at a particular speed. Say, uh, assume that it is running at uh, 1000 rotations per minute, we call RPM. So it, everything is balanced. So in case the gas from the well, coming from the well is high, so the pressure in the separator will increase. So now uh, the first step is that we should increase the compressor speed so that it can withdraw more gas from the separator. So generally, so we increase the speed of the compressor. Instead of rotating at uh, 1000 RPM, it increases say by 1010 RPM or 1050 RPM to uh, take all the gas from the separator. So uh, in case that control system fails, we have another control wall, another pressure transmitter, a pressure controller, and the control wall, and it opens to flare. So we can say that it goes for uh, flaring, that it is firing the gas. You would have seen in chemical industries, you will have a flare, uh, maybe at about 30 meters, 40 meters, you will have a gas burning, so that unit is called flare. So if uh, the inflow control also fails, and uh, then the gas will be released to the flare. So that's how this uh, pressure is controlled. Okay. So similarly, for the le liquid level, we have two controls. We want, uh, oil, in the oil outlet, we have a control valve. And the water outlet also, we have a control valve. So this level in the uh, the cell will be maintained based on this. Okay. So here the so most important is this pressure control because from safety perspective the vessel should be operated below the uh, designed pressure. So if the pressure increases beyond its uh, design value so it can break. So it can uh, develop leak or it can burst when the pressure goes beyond certain limit. So now we have seen uh, all these controls physically present in this separator unit. And how do we uh, represent uh, this in a form of a bow tie? So as we have uh, discussed last time, so bow tie diagram uh, is part of a risk assessment. It's a method of risk assessment. Okay, so in this uh, process facility, so we have seen uh, separator. So in a Process plant, you will have many number of such uh, separators or pressure vessels or different equipment. So, uh, for each equipment, how it is safely maintained. So, it uh, uh, we represent uh, in the form of a bow tie, it's a graphical representation. Okay. So, in the further slides, so we'll see how do we represent uh, all these controls. Uh, in a graphical form, in the form of a bow tie. So first, uh, as we have seen, the uh, first step uh, in developing a bow tie uh, is to describe the hazard. 
so in this case the hazard is uh, processing pressurized hydrocarbon in a separator so the separator tag number is given v101 okay. so we should give as much information as possible so here the important uh, the few important points are so we have to uh, capture what are we handling what fluid we are handling so in this case we are uh, saying that it uh, it is a hydrocarbon uh, because it uh, has uh, it is the fluid is coming from uh, well oil well so it is a hydrocarbon and it is under pressure so if it is under uh, if the pressure is zero it is at atmospheric pressure that may not be any risk involved so the pressurized uh, writing as pressurized hydrocarbon is important and uh, it is in a separator v101 so so in this uh, this is the first step so we have to describe what is the process okay so and uh, what fluid we are handling what is the pressure uh, temperature condition so in this case the pressure is most critical temperature is not very critical so we have captured uh, uh, only the pressure okay so we'll move on to next step so next step is uh, describing the top event so in this case uh, the top event is loss of containment so so if you see so the in the separator so now it uh, contains oil gas and water okay so as long as it is uh, and it is in pressurized condition as long as uh, the fluid the oil and gas is contained within the separator there is no harm so when uh, for uh, some reason if any control fail if the separator starts leak or it uh, burst then we say it is called loss of containment because the oil or gas uh, which is inside the separator comes out so so next up we say it is a loss of containment is the top event so next step is uh, so we need to capture the uh, threat so threat as uh, we have seen earlier so threat uh, it is a situation or an event which makes uh, the loss of containment the top event to happen so in this case as we have seen uh, the uh, separator is uh, designed for uh, say 15 bar pressure so the loss of containment uh, that is gas leak or the breakage of a separator might happen when the pressure operating pressure exceeds the design limit so that is uh, one of the threats so we have considered okay so operating above the pressure limits is uh, captured as a uh, threat so another reason could be say the pressure is uh, well within the limit say 14 bar or 13 bar but uh, due to corrosion either internal corrosion or external corrosion so the thickness of the uh, pressure vessel uh, might come down so you might have seen uh, the rusting of uh, iron plates okay. so uh, the more it gets uh, rusted the thickness uh, you know the the lesser the uh, thickness becomes so so this is also considered as one of the threats so even if the pressure is within the limit but if the due to corrosion the thickness it can make the thickness become less so assume that originally the thickness was 10 millimeter now due to corrosion the thickness would have come down to 8 millimeter okay so when the separator is designed so it is designed with a uh, iron plate of 10 mm thickness so which can withstand 15 bar now due to corrosion uh, it can be either internal corrosion or external corrosion so the thickness has reduced by 2 mm so instead of uh, from 10 mm the thickness has come down to 8 mm so now the vessel cannot withstand the same pressure because the thickness of the plate has come down 
to HMM. So now there is a threat. So there is a risk so at any time your, your cell can give way. So, so in this example, so we can take these two as uh, threats. There can be other threats. For the training purpose, we are considering only these two. Okay. So next uh, on the right hand side, uh, so we are capturing consequences. So in case uh, the vessel fails, so it develops a leak, okay, and it develops a crack. Uh, through the crack, uh, the hydrocarbon leaks. So there can be two situations. Okay. So the gas leak uh, occurs, and it still fire has not occurred. So you have some time. Okay. So as we know, for a fire triangle, so we need three, uh, you know, elements. So here we have uh, gas. Uh, this is the uh, flammable material. So next we have oxygen. And then the third uh, element is uh, high temperature or spark, okay. ignition source. So as long as there is no ignition source, there is no spark around, the gas will not get ignited. It will remain as a gas. Okay. So that uh, we call uh, and uh, uh, so till so you have some time to prevent mm. fire from happening. Okay. So uh, but in case uh there is no prevention there is no barrier and uh, the gas uh, has uh, found some ignition source electrical spark or a person can be found smoking so it can ignite the leaked gas so that situation we call flash fire so it can result in serious injuries to personnel and the personnel may get uh, burned uh, injuries that is one uh, consequence. So the other consequence can be, so uh, assume that the gas continues to leak and there is no ignition source. So what will happen? So that we call formation of vapor cloud. So there's a good volume of uh, gas leak happen and it is accumulated in a particular area. It's surrounding the vessel. Okay. And if there is no wind, heavy wind, and uh, then uh, the gas uh, may not get uh, dispersed so it will get accumulated so assume that uh, um, there's a time of around one, half an hour or one hour so so that will be sufficient to form a good volume of uh, vapor cloud so after that if any spark occurs then it will result in an explosion so 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 the, in case of explosion, if personnel are around, so because many will be working in the plant, until it gets ignited, people may not know. So if the gas is not having any smell, if it is odorless, then no one would know that there is a gas leak. Okay? But uh, when it gets accumulated and then it gets uh, uh, spark, then it will get exploded. Then many people may get serious injuries or it can result in fatality. So the gas leak which is a top event so can result in uh, uh, as we have seen there can be two consequences two situations one so if it uh, finds an ignition source uh, within a short time then it can result in a flash fire so the consequences uh, will be severe but may not be more severe but in case uh, the gas gets accumulated over a period of time and then later it finds an ignition source then it can result in an explosion so that will be more catastrophic and uh, many people might uh, get serious injuries or it can result in fatality so moving on to next step so we come to the important part of uh, uh, the boat development as we have seen uh, so the next step is uh, incorporating the barriers so barriers are the most uh, critical uh, key element uh, of a bowtie diagram okay. so uh, see this uh, picture so on the left hand side we have the thread 
the threat is operating the vessel above the design limit, above the pressure limit. And you have at the right hand side, you have the top even that is uh, breakage or uh, of a vessel and leading to gas leak. So gas leak or oil leak is the uh, top event, okay? loss of containment. So, um, so what are the preventive control, prevention barriers? Whatever we have seen in the uh, vessel, in the pressure vessels, we have captured. So I'll go back to the same picture. So whatever the instruments you have seen, the pressure transmitter, pressure controller, control valve, pressure switch, shutdown valve, pressure safety valve, etc. All are controls you know, so that we capture the other as a barrier in the bowtie diagram. So from the left side, and side we can see uh, the pressure switch uh, I 104. So this is a pressure switch uh, instrument. So when the pressure exceeds certain limits, say 14 bar, so it will close the shutdown valve. Okay, so that acts as a barrier, it's an effective barrier. So next, uh, there are two pressure control loops. So one is at the inlet, it controls the inlet. Uh, other one controls at the outlet, it uh, so opens to flat. And the first one, it closes the inlet. So first step is to close the inlet, even if the pressure goes high, then you open the flat outlet. So we have captured first is PSHH104, then PHC102, and next is PHC103, then followed by pressure safety valve, that is 105. And uh, next is the standard operating procedure. So as we have seen in the barriers uh, slide, so human action can also be considered as a barrier. Okay. So even if we have a number of uh, uh, instruments or equipment as a barrier, safeguards, still uh, you know, that might be some residual risk. So it's always uh, human uh, you know, uh, brain can be superior to all. So we have uh, the control room operators, so they continuously monitor the uh, process, so they can also, they will also take uh, corrective action so before the failure happens. So always, so we consider standard operating procedures or a human action as a barrier. And uh, they may not be able to act independently, but uh, with the help of instruments, so they can. So all instrument, uh, all instruments uh, may not uh, fail at the same time, right? So even if a few instruments uh, fail, uh, whatever the instrument that is working, based on those readings, the operator can take an action to control the uh, situation. So this is for the uh, first thread, which is uh, operating above the pressure limits. Okay. So next, uh, we have seen another thread that is corrosion, internal or external corrosion. So what are the barriers to prevent? Uh, we'll see what are the barriers to prevent uh, corrosion. So starting from left, so one barrier considered is design basis. Okay? So before, so we construct an equipment or a process facility, so we have uh, design. We design, or uh, we can say we engineer, uh, we carry out engineering and design. So what type of uh, material to be chosen and what is the thickness of the plate, so etc. And what is the size of the cell, etc. So the design basis, if the design is strong enough, okay, so in this case, as the, in this example, we have seen that uh, the vessel is designed for 15 bar and uh, for which the thickness of the shell of the plate is say 10 mm, uh, 10 uh, millimeters. So it is based on a design calculation. Okay? And always uh, you would find that uh, suppose the actual thickness required is uh, say 10 millimeter, say uh, 7 millimeter. 
we don't take 7 millimeter we take 10 millimeter we have to give an example so the 3 millimeter additional thickness we is considered to take care of corrosion okay. so it is termed as corrosion allowance so during the course of uh, the operation so the materials are subjected to corrosion internal corrosion and external corrosion and the corrosion rate uh, depends on uh, the process uh, fluid and then external atmospheric condition so uh, so the design play the crucial part so the design is considered as a barrier because if the design is not proper then uh, the failure also so the chances of failure will be more so the design basis is considered as a barrier so next barrier is corrosion monitoring okay. so corrosion monitoring so there are different methods of monitoring the corrosion say so, as we have seen the well fluid it contains water oil and gas so so many times uh, we see that the water is corrosive okay so uh, there are uh, uh, special probes uh, and coupons installed inside the vessel or inside the incoming pipeline to measure how much is the corrosion so it is normally measured in uh, mils per year um, one mill is uh, you know, 10 power minus uh, 3 of uh, 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 inch so there are uh, different units uh, depending on uh, whether you have uh, if a unit is followed or you know, what type of unit is followed so the corrosion uh, rate is measured and based on that uh, there are certain chemicals which inhibits chem uh, corrosion so the chemical uh, uh, which can inhibit corrosion will be injected so for that corrosion monitoring is uh, taken as a barrier and next is uh, risk based uh, inspection so uh, in an industry so you will have a quality control department so normally they periodically they measure the thickness of uh, the uh, the separator shell so originally uh, suppose uh, the thickness is 10 millimeter so for every six months or every once in a year they do a measurement okay. and uh, so based on the thickness measurement we will come to know whether the thickness has reduced or not okay. so if the thickness has reduced then uh, we will uh, stop the process unit and we will take corrective measures okay. so either we replace part of the shell or we build additional material to make up for the loss and the risk based inspection uh, why it is called risk based inspection and uh, so in a uh, process unit so say there may be uh, 40 or 50 equipment so all may not be equally critical so based on the criticality ranking so the frequency of inspection will be decided so one um, vessel which may be very critical uh, it may be very uh, hazardous, the consequence may be very severe. So, that may be inspected once in three months. And the, uh, some in like uh, separators uh, may not be so critical. So, the inspection frequency may be once in a year. So, that is called risk based inspection. So it is not a fixed uh, period inspection, it is a based on risk. So, that is also a barrier against corrosion. So, the next barrier for external corrosion is painting. So normally this we do in uh, our regular day to day life whenever any structure is uh, getting rusted we do periodic painting. The same is uh, true in uh, industry also depending on the severity and uh, so the frequency of uh, painting will be decided. Okay. So these two forms, uh, uh, so these two forms uh, the two arms in the on the left hand side of the boat thing. so one is against uh, operation above the pressure limits the second is against uh, internal or external corrosion okay. so when all these barriers are uh, in place or uh, it is effective so the probability of the vessel failure is very remote okay. so that's the reason these barriers are very critical so we'll move on to the right hand side 
So now assume that even if we have all barriers, so some failure barriers uh, fail. Example, uh, the pressure limit has exceeded or uh, due to corrosion. So assume that the corrosion was not monitored properly, thickness was not measured frequently, and the thickness has come down from 10 millimeter to 7 millimeter at some locations and uh, the vessel has uh, developed a crack okay so what will happen the gas uh, will leak so that is called the loss of containment so when this uh, event has happened now our uh, efforts are to uh, mitigate uh, fire from occurring okay so either so there can be two situations one is uh, either we positively avoid the uh, fire okay so next is uh, even if the fire happens so we uh, reduce the in impact or intensity of the fire okay? so that uh, whatever the, the measures we take all are considered as mitigation or recovery barrier and we can see uh, one by one okay so starting from the left first is uh, gas detector so in normally in process plant at uh, strategic uh, locations so we install gas detector so if uh, the gas leaks so the detector will sense and it will give an alarm to the control room so the operator will become alert that something has gone wrong so the uh, the detective will have a tag number and the location so when the alarm comes from this part one particular detector operator will know that in this area there is a gas leak so first thing is uh, uh, no they will announce that there is a gas leak and then no one should go near okay so this uh, this is uh, so when the gas leak happens then uh, so they can isolate the inlet so the uh, the well fluid will be closed so if the amount of leakage will be reduced okay? so that is uh, taken as a first barrier so gas detector so gas detector itself it will not prevent so it will only indicate that the uh, gas leak or event has occurred okay so we can take we have time to take corrective action so it can prevent fire from happening so other is an esd system emergency esd stands for the emergency shutdown okay? so as we have uh, uh, seen uh, at the left hand side we had a shutdown ball okay. i'll show the picture once again so sdv 101 so this is called a shutdown ball okay so normally so if uh, the pressure is sensed and pressure goes above certain limit then this wall will close so even so in this case uh, we have assumed that pressure is within the limit but uh, unfortunately the thickness of the vessel has come down so which has resulted in a crack in a particular place and gas is leaking okay. so uh, so the esd system so there will be a uh, option to manually uh, or operator can close from the control room so the emergency shutdown wall so on seeing this gas uh, getting the gas leak along so the operator can uh, close the, uh, the shutdown wall, inlet shutdown wall, so that by isolating the vessel. So the volume of gas leak would be reduced. So it will not be continuous. So this is the emergency shutdown system is a barrier. Okay. So similar, next is ignition control. Okay. So what we mean by ignition control is so to prevent the uh, spark from occurring. So in a process industry, okay, so you will have number of electrical equipment. So there will be many lights, light fittings, motors, junction boxes, etc. Okay. So this uh, electrical equipment, so uh, it can uh, create spark. So you would have seen in our uh, homes that whenever we switch on the geyser, uh, or a kettle so the switch in the switch when we operate the you might have seen uh, a spark or flash inside the switch okay. the same thing can happen uh, in an uh, industry 
so which will be dangerous if there is a gas leak happens and the, when the electrical equipment is operated that can be a spark created it can ignite uh, the gas so uh, so in the electrical equipment are designed such a way so the electrical equipments used in process industry are designed such a way that the spark even if occurs it will not be transmitted outside so that uh, we call uh, uh, flame proof equipment so the enclosure is capable of withstanding uh, a particular pressure so even if a spark uh, happens it will not transmit the explosive mixture to outside so that we mean by ignition control so similarly so we uh, whenever gas leak happens we don't allow any the work which can create spark so all works will be stopped immediately and it will be announced in a paging system uh, that no work which has the potential to create spark will be stopped so that by we control the ignition source so next barrier is flame detectors assume that uh, no left side all fail the way of gas leak and then uh, gas detector either it failed or the operator uh, forgot or mistook notice the alarm take control of the emergency shutdown system fail ignition control fail and now we have a fire okay so the fire uh, so you will have uh, many uh, fire detectors to uh, detect the fire that occurred at strategic places we will have uh, fire detectors placed across the processing plant okay. so uh, so even if the operator misses the gas alarm gas leak alarm there will be one more uh, alarm from the fire detector so which uh, uh, so the each fire detector will have a tag number and the tag let wall and you can get ready for firefighting okay. so next is manual call points at uh, similar to fire detectors and uh, manual call points are uh, like similar to switches so it can be operated by a human being so if a person goes uh, to a location and if he sees fire at a place so this manual call points can be activated so in buildings you might have seen break glass unit so there will be a small hammer and there will be a glass uh, so when we break that glass uh, the switch will be released and it will give an alarm to the control room okay so there are different types of manual call points so objective is to inform pass the information to the control room so if a person sees gas leak or if a person sees uh, fire it can activate manual call points to give an alarm to control room so this also acts as a barrier so if a person uh, notices in time if we uh, no um, gives an uh, alarm to control room then action can be taken within a short period and uh, major action can be avoided okay. so next barrier is uh, fire protection system that is uh, a fire water network there are various types of fire fighting system so for a gas fire there's a different system for a oil fire there are different system to quench the fire so that is called fire protection system and next finally is emergency response okay. so even if uh, all those controls are in place so some control can fail then uh, uh, we can uh, have a situation of the fire uh, escalating for a longer time so now uh, so the site uh, leadership will decide what to do so if the fire cannot be brought under control the personnel have to be evacuated so this emergency response system or emergency response plan so we'll have a set of uh, instructions for a different situation so depending on the situation that uh, plan will be followed so the evacuation so the people will be evacuated so there will be siren there will be different uh, routes safe routes so they should move against the wind directions so all those procedures will be written in uh, the emergency response plan and that uh, they will evacuate from the site
See, for example, if uh, the process facility is the offshore offshore platform, then if in case of a fire, if we are not able to control the fire, we have to only option is to escape uh, from the fire situation. So that will uh, so we'll have many you know uh, emergency boards called life raft and then uh, standby vessels etc. And then uh, we abandon the platform and then uh, we go to a rescue boat and then escape. Okay, so that is a final barrier. So all these are uh, captured at the right hand side of the boat. Eh? So which uh, explains that. So after the event uh, has happened, how do we mitigate the the event turning into consequence, either to avoid or to mitigate the impact, reduce the impact of the consequence. So same case for uh, vapor cloud explosion also. This also fire, only the scale of fire is high. So the next step would be to incorporate escalation factors and controls. So in this example, we'll see what is escalation factor and control. So in the left hand side, the barrier, so we have uh, given a pressure safety bar 105 as a barrier. It's a prevention barrier. It prevents, uh, uh, the, it prevents high pressure in the vessel. Yeah, when the pressure goes high, again I'll show the uh, picture of the example. The example. So this is a safety wall. So when the pressure goes high, the safety wall opens and releases the gas to flare. So that by reducing the pressure, saving the separator from failing. Okay. So. So this uh, PSV is captured as a barrier. So now uh, there are many factors or situation which can make this barrier fail. So the PSV can fail. One can be an uh, incorrect uh, set point. So what do we mean by incorrect set point? Is suppose uh, say the pressure vessel is uh, designed for 15 bar, and this uh, set point uh, for this pressure safety wall is say 14.5. So before it, the pressure reaches 15 bar, when the pressure reaches 14.5 bar, the safety valve should open and release the gas to flare. So the pressure will come down. It will not go beyond 14.5. So instead of, uh, it, instead, if the set point uh, by mistake, if it goes above 15, so what will happen? The pressure safety valve will not open. So that we call incorrect set point. So though we have a barrier, the PSV installed in place, but the set, uh, the set point is wrong, it is incorrect, then also it is uh, the barrier will not function. So that, uh, that's why we call it is an incorrect set point. It's an escalation factor which makes the barrier to fail or the, which makes the barrier you know, ineffective. It is uh, supposed to open at 14.5 bar but it doesn't open, so it fails to open. And another can be, it can be, it can also fail on its own malfunctioning of PSV, it may not work properly. Or another reason could be, there is a, uh, in normally, uh, it is connected to a wall, so if the wall is uh, somebody by mistake kept closed, so the PSV will be isolated. So even if, so it cannot sense the pressure and open. So Allah, so we have to see uh, what are the conditions which will make the barriers fail and what are the controls to be put in place to avoid that situation. Okay. So now we have seen this escalation factor control, for example, incorrect set point okay, or malfunction of the PSV. So similarly, same case for the right, right hand side. So to give an example, we have a fire detector. Okay. So fire detector function is to sense fire and give an alarm to control room that fire has occurred. But if the fire detector fails to sense the fire, so we, which is called malfunction of the fire detector, then, uh, then uh, the fire detector will not function. 
Okay, so that is called escalation factor. So the next step is how do we uh, avoid you no know, such situation? Okay. So for example, uh, the malfunction of the PSV. So to avoid malfunction of the PSV, what we the corrective measures is periodically it is inspected, maintained, and calibrated. So once in six months or so, we normally you know the test the pressure safety valve and uh, we ensure that at 14.5 bar it opens okay, it operates so this is called escalation factor control and the same case with uh, say fire detector also so malfunction of the fire detectors so it is prevented by periodic calibration and maintenance so with that we conclude so once it is completed the bow tie will look like this so this is not 100 percent complete so the barriers are placed but the escalation factor and control so we have shown for few so one psv at the left hand side we have considered and the right hand side fire detectors we have considered so once you incorporate escalation factors and escalation factor controls for each barrier both at the left hand side and right hand side with that the bow tie will be complete so when a person look, uh, looks at it he will give a you know he will get a uh, graphical overview of this pressure vessel so this pressure vessel one or two these are the controls in place to avoid any potential accident so they will know what is the uh, the frequency of testing so these are the barriers these barriers have to be maintained well to avoid any accident okay. so that gives a graphical picture of the risk management this i conclude so open for questions Uh, thank you, sir, for such an informative and engaging session. Uh, uh, we move on to the questions. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm audible, right? Hello, sir. Am I audible? Hello. Yeah, Anupama, I have finished, uh, so I can take the questions. Okay, sir. I'm audible, right? Yeah. Now uh, you are audible. Okay, we'll move on to the question. Thank you for such an informative session, sir. Um, uh, the first question is, uh, in bottom of vessel, uh, you have mentioned LCB, but no level transmitter is shown and no control function is linked to it. Can you explain? So, uh, as I told in the beginning, so in this case, the pressure control is more critical to avoid any accident. So that's the reason in this example, I have uh, uh, no, represented only the pressure control. Okay. You are correct that the, there will be level transmitter, level controller and the level control valve. So that I have not shown in the picture. Okay. A, we have only one hour time. So I thought which is most important is pressure control. Uh, from uh, no prevention of accident point of view, that's the reason I uh, consider only pressure. And therefore, the level for both oil level as well as water level, there will be separate transmitters and controls in a, a normal situation. Our next question um, How SOP is considered as one of the barriers in the example? So, um, SOP uh, is a human, uh, can be considered as a human intervention. So, in this case, assume that uh, the pressure is uh, going high, okay, and uh, uh, still the control valve, inlet control valve, PC102, is uh, open at the same uh, position. Okay. So, the SOP will have standard instructions stating that. Um, so what to do in case of uh, this instrument malfunction so the operator will initiate so operator can directly uh, take control of this control valve from control room 
and by monitoring the pressure the operator can uh, either close or open the control valve to maintain the pressure so that's how the sop is considered as one of the barrier against uh, protection uh, for high pressure our uh, next question uh, the escalation factor for barriers should we find out the possible barriers or should we find out the single barrier out of all barriers now well, the escalation factor should be considered for all barriers for individual barriers so we should uh, analyze uh, what can make the barrier uh, less effective or uh, impair the barrier so all those conditions we have to list and then uh, for each condition uh, we should find the suitable uh, barriers to be put in place so that uh, the impact of the escalation factor is reduced and the barrier is uh, still uh, effective as an example we have seen that the pressure safety valve so the pressure safety valve uh, if it is uh, so it can malfunction if it malfunction then uh, it is of no use so though it is a barrier it is considered as an effective barrier because it's a mechanical device there is no electronics involved to fail it's a physical mechanical device uh, against a spring so uh, it is generally considered as a very effective barrier but no it's uh, no equipment is 100% safe so it can also fail so the uh, so the malfunction is considered as escalation for a barrier of pressure safety valve and the escalation factor control would be to periodically inspect and calibrate so that uh, you know the barrier is made functional it is ensured that it is available for the service um next question uh, what is the difference between mitigation and preventive barriers yeah prevention barriers for uh, no to it uh, helps to prevent the top even from occurring so in this example um say the top event is considered as a leak from the separator the separator either Uh, develops a minor leak or it develops a crack or it bursts uh, and it completely fails that is a uh, it is termed as stop event here the gas will be released to the atmosphere so the intention is to contain within the separator but uh, the containment is lost so that's what we are saying loss of containment that is a top event so which uh, the barriers which are put in place to prevent this situation from happening are uh, defined as prevention barriers that's what we have seen uh, uh, this pressure safety wall or high pressure trips or uh, prevention against corrosion etc are all called the uh, prevention barriers so with, when they are all uh, intact uh, it is working properly then it will prevent uh, this breakage of the tank or leakage of the tank so that is called prevention barrier so coming to the right hand side if the prevention barriers fail and the uh, separator has developed leak it will develop the crack and gas is leaking so that is the top event has already occurred so the next uh, mitigation barrier is to uh, either prevent fire from occurring gas has already leaked as long as there is no fire there is no consequence okay so how do we prevent fire from occurring so we can we have a sensor uh, first is to sense gas leak and it can immediately act close the gas inlet to prevent further leakage that is one barrier other is if, if uh, then the operator can directly uh, close the shutdown valve at the inlet that we have seen as a esd system emergency shutdown and other is all the electrical equipments are uh, no flame proof enclosure it will not create any spark to prevent uh, fire and uh, these are all these are also mitigation barriers to prevent fire from happening so the next set of barriers so uh, like fire detectors fire fighting system etc so those are also called the uh, 
mitigation barriers. So they don't prevent uh, fire from happening, but they prevent or they reduce the impact of fire. Okay, so if the fire happens for five minutes, so fire occurs within five minutes, if it is uh, fire is quenched, so the impact will be less. But if the fire continues to burn for longer period, the impact will be more. So uh, even if fire happens, so the barriers which are uh, put in place to reduce its impact of uh, the consequence, they are also termed as mitigation barriers. Uh, can you explain the difference between LOPA and BOTA development, which is important in deciding the layers of protection and how many layers need to be incorporated? So the, uh, so the layers of LOPA is layers of protection. So that is uh, one form of uh, risk assessment. And the BOTE is also a form of risk assessment, but BOTE, it is more of, as I think the same question was asked last week also, uh, it is a graphical representation of BOTE. So in a BOTE diagram, so we'll know uh, in a graphical way what are the, uh, so hazard, what is the top event, what are the uh, different barriers placed both for prevention as well as mitigation. So it is a graphical way of uh, representing, so which is not the case in uh, layers of uh, uh, protection analysis. So uh, uh, the person who uh, doesn't have a full knowledge of layers of protection also can understand with the BOTE diagram, what are the risks involved, what are the barriers, what, first is what are the threats. So suppose if you see, you look at this BOTE diagram, so it is graphically you know, visible to anyone. So the, in this case, so the top event uh, is uh, the loss of containment, the loss of uh, the hydrocarbon which is supposed to be inside the pressure vessels. So, but it does, uh, the risk is when it comes out, so it is called loss of containment. So that is the center point of the BOTE diagram, okay. So all our actions are centered around, so the loss of containment is the, the primary part of this risk assessment. So in any pro, uh, bigger chemical industries, uh, petrochemical or oil field, so the loss of containment only results in major uh, catastrophic accidents. So other fall from height are all considered as uh, as severe as uh, this uh, major explosion or the major fire accident. Okay. So that's why the loss of containment assumes the center stage. So on the left hand side you have all those control which prevents uh, loss of containment from happening. And the right hand side, the barriers are represented, which, uh, uh, no, if this uh, center's part, this happens, how do we prevent further escalation? So it gives a very, you know, graphical representation of how do we manage this risk and what are the, uh, you know, barriers. So barriers are most critical. What are the barriers for this particular case? So with the tag number, with the description, it is clearly seen. Both for the prevention as well as the mitigation. So anyone with uh, uh, no little amount of knowledge uh, can understand. But whereas LOPA, it is a mathematical analysis and it's not a graphical representation. So a person with uh, good the knowledge of how LOPA is performed, so those only can uh, see. So both are risk uh, you know, management tools, but uh, BOTA is more uh, effective since it is graphical, it can be easily understood and it is uh, qualitative, mostly it is here also we, it can be quantitative, but uh, the diagram as such is a qualitative way of risk assessment. Uh, uh, where can we get the complete bow tie for the separator operation with all the escalation factors and it controls? No, it, uh, it has to be developed for a case-to-case -case basis because uh, it depends on the process parameters. 
if the well fluid is corrosive then more importance should be given uh, for another you know, barriers which are deals with corrosion and depends on the pressure temperature etc so this is the what we have seen today is the basic uh, structure depending on uh, the uh, site situation and depending on the uh, know the level of uh, barriers provided so in this we have seen for the uh, inlet side there are three barriers three layers of protection we have seen and uh, outlet also uh, know uh, we have seen the compressor speed control and the control to flare etc so it depends on the facility uh, in that uh, type of equipment so in every side you may not have compressor so when the gas uh, is less so the company may not decide to have a compressor which is expensive so they may simply flare the gas okay so depending on the uh, no type of equipment involved we need to develop the boat train so the structure is same but the individual barrier uh, would vary depending on the uh, type of uh, you know the number of equipment uh, involved in the process uh, next question uh, loss of containment consequence only related to injury or fatalities or is it related to damage to property damage to the environment Now it involves uh, all four. We call people, environment, asset, and reputation. So for this example, uh, for this today's class, I have considered only the human aspect. So in case of fire, definitely there will be damage to asset or equipment. And uh, in case of oil leak, so it is a damage to environment. We call oil spill and damage to environment. and a reputation to the organization so we might have seen uh, when the bombay high platform um, accident happened how the reputation of the organization suffered and uh, piper alpha in uh, not to see our uh, no, uh, bp accident uh, in gulf of mexico so definitely the reputation of the organization is uh, involved it is affected so on four accounts normally we consider people environment asset and reputation only for this example i have taken only people which is more so in any accident the primary importance is given to saving people life so life is the foremost uh, part to be taken care of So in the example, I have considered only people, but otherwise, people, environment, asset, and reputation are also to be considered. Uh, which software is used to develop the Bote diagram? So we use the Bote XP. Bote XP. Um. Next question. Uh, is FEMA a common? Pardon? FEMA accommodated in both day. If yes, how? No, the uh, failure mode effect analysis. It is for a particular equipment failure. Mostly for mechanical equipment we consider, but both day is generally for uh, any equipment, static or rotating. so the fema also can be you know represented like if you take a compressor alone we are running a compressor so running a compressor can be considered as a hazard the top even could be you no know, mechanical failure of the compressor or again loss of uh, containment and uh, uh, we can have prevention barriers or mitigation barriers for this case and we can have uh, what are the prevention barriers all we were temperatures uh, bearing vibration controls etc can be captured okay. so in a process industry which is like we have developed bow tie for uh, pressure vessels so we do develop uh, bow ties for uh, mechanical equipment also compressors or pumps so wherein uh, so whatever we consider for failure mode effect analysis for an equipment failure so the same can be uh, done for uh, 
the same can be captured in a bow tie and it can rep can be represented in the form of a bow tie also but the uh, sema is mainly suited for equipment failures uh is coupon and prop the method to measure the corrosion yeah probe uh, both are for uh, measuring the corrosion rate coupons are the mechanical uh, device uh, it's like a plate uh, uh, so it is kept inside the flow pipeline so it is similar to the uh, pipeline or the vessel uh, material of construction so once in six months or once in a year the coupon is taken and the corrosion products are analyzed in the lab so that by we get uh, what is the corrosion so and the probe is uh, it is uh, generally it's an instrument an electronic instrument and it uh, it is installed in a pipeline or a vessel and it uh, dynamically it gives a reading what is the current corrosion rate so in pro in the probe it is a continuous uh, measurement it gives corrosion rate on a dynamic basis whereas corrosion coupons uh, it is uh, physically it has to be installed and retrieved from the pipeline so even if the frequency the normally the in frequency is once in six months or once in a year so till that time uh, no so it is only yeah no, at periodic interval the corrosion rate can be uh, studied observed but in probe it is a continuous uh, reading available uh uh is fire or flame detectors under the fire protection system or is it uh, different yeah fire detector uh, is uh, a part of fire protection system so why do we uh, represent separately is that uh, say in some uh, industries so depending on the size and uh, uh, or risk involved uh, so either we have a uh, active fire fighting uh, system or we have only detectors okay, so assume uh, we can have two cases two possibilities one is we have only fire detectors and there is no uh, fire fighting system available say uh, so when assume that it is a gas plant so the uh, fire can be controlled by isolating the gas so it is uh, sufficient to and it is a volume of gas handle it's small it's uh, only a, a small unit so then the company may decide to have only fire detector and uh, they will not have any fire fighting system like foam or water uh, to quench the fire so uh, when the fire detector is activated they isolate the source of gas then the fire will eventually be put off when uh, the complete gas is exhausted so in that situation so only fire detector is available so there is no other fire fighting system so we represent fire detector separately so in major uh, or in major facilities where uh, there are number of uh, uh, equipment involved oil gas involved then we have uh, active fire fighting system so we have fire water network we have foam system to effectively quench the fire so there uh, it is uh, part of the fire fighting system so when uh, also when it is automatic so when uh, so in some companies they choose manual control some companies they choose automatic there are many factors involved so when uh, uh, it is automatic so that is when the fire is detected fire detector gives a signal then automatically the fire fighting system either fire water gets activated or the foam system gets activated so there the, the fire protection system includes everything so we in the barrier when we represent the barrier uh, we represent as a fire uh, protection system so in case of a manual activation So we consider separately. So fire detector as a barrier separately, and fire protection system as a barrier separately. So though both are interlinked, so since the actions are uh, separate, we capture as a two individual uh, barrier. Uh, 
next question uh, as corrosion prevention uh, what are the engineering controls done so corrosion prevention engineering control the first step is to choose the correct material of construction so generally uh, you know oil field or chemical plant uh, carbon steel is widely used uh, for uh, vessels uh, and uh, pipelines and piping but if uh, sudden uh, um, fluids are very corrosive and accordingly we choose the current correct material of construction so in some cases like uh, reactor uh, some reactors are even gas uh, glass lined vessels so even the inside surface is uh, made of glass outside you have metallic uh, say carbon steel structure shell inside uh, there is a glass in some cases it is uh, lined with the plant or even the vessel whole vessel can be made of titanium or the cast lysi so there are different materials of construction depending on the fluid so uh, there the design assumes the engineering assumes more importance so that is done at the design stage so when we know the fluid properties so when we know that uh, carbon steel is uh, uh, the carbon steel cannot withstand uh, the corrosivity of the fluid then we uh, choose a different material titanium or tantalum as i see more there are different uh, metal of construction so the metallurgy uh, will be decided at the design stage so the the expert who you know the metallurgist who knows which material will be suitable for which fluid so accordingly the material of construction is divided uh in the consequence mitigation barrier that was listed in operation as it required to do mitigation for the safety without disturbing the process operation pardon can you please repeat uh in the consequence mitigation barriers that were listed in operation is it required to do mitigation for the safety without disturbing the process operation yeah definitely uh, in any process plant so stopping the production uh, it cost money so the first step would be to mitigate to without disturbing the without stopping the uh, production operation but uh, if the situation warrant then uh, the plant has to be stopped say for example if the gas leak cannot be arrested and uh, if the fire continues then it cannot be left as it is so the first step would be to control the gas leak and uh, uh, quench the fire as early as as possible so if the situation uh, if the situation is escalating further if the fire cannot be controlled if the gas leak cannot be controlled then the operation has to be stopped so it depends on the situation so the safety assumes importance always um next question uh, in the example of separator uh, pressure is a compressor suction pressure oh, one second in the example the separator pressure is the compressor suction pressure in that case what is set point of pic 103 compared to pic 102 and psh 104 okay so uh, all the set points are decided to have a uh, stable operation okay. so if you uh, so generally so in this operator uh, as we have discussed so the compressor takes the gas from the separator so the as long as the compressor takes all the gas generated from the separator then the pressure will not increase further so the and the compressor will have certain uh, capacity assume that the compressor maximum uh, speed is 1200 rpm so uh, i have told in the beginning that the rpm will be maintained around uh, 1000 so so we can increase up to 1200 okay assume that uh, the uh, capacity of the uh, compressor is a 100 meter cube 
uh, per minute. So it can take 100 meter cube per minute. Uh, that is the capacity of the compressor. If the inflow is high, then the pressure will increase. Suppose the uh, suction pressure of the controller, the set point is uh, given as uh, 12 bar. So as long as, uh, and uh, suppose the pressure goes above 12 bar, 12.5, 12 then we increase the uh, compressor speed. So when the compressor, the speed increases, it draws more uh, gas from the separator and uh, the pressure will be uh, maintained. But however, assume that uh, the well produces more suddenly, the gas inlet is more. So I told as an example, 100 meter cube per hour. So suddenly, if it uh, goes to say, uh, 130 meter cube per hour, and uh, we have already increased the compressor speed to a maximum of uh, 1200 RPM. So beyond that compressor speed cannot in, cannot be increased. So if the further if the pressure goes high above 12, so the next step is to control the inlet pressure. So inlet, okay. So you can you have to decide uh, either you have an option to flare the gas, which is a waste of uh, energy, or you control the inlet. Okay. So you control the inlet feed from the well. So the uh, inlet PCV 102 can be the set point. Uh, so if you compare uh, the set points, if you take the two cases, compressor to suction pressure control as well as the PAC 102, which is inlet control. So the inlet control will be at a slightly higher. Suppose the suction pressure set point is kept at 12 bar. The PAC 102 will be kept at either 12.5 or 13 bar. So there can be cases, so momentarily the flow from the well might be high, okay. So we have already increased the RPM of the compressor to 1200, still the pressure is going high. So we will wait for immediately, we will not close the inlet, uh, throttle the inlet, we will wait for some time. So we keep the set point slightly higher, either 13 or 13.5 bar and then uh, till that time the inlet the wall will not get throttled. So if the flow from the well continues to be high, higher than the capacity of the compressor, then we'll throttle the inlet. So the PAC 102 set point will be higher than the set point of suction pressure controller of the compressor. Uh, next question. Uh, in an equipment, uh, we consider only one event failure. If multi chance of failures are envisaged, how to merge all in one for single equipment? Okay, here uh, so we are considering multiple thread, right? Uh, so if the equipment, so even if you take uh, in this case, we have taken separator as an equipment. So the separator can fail on many accounts. So here in this example, we have taken two cases. One is pressure uh, going above the design limit. The other is corrosion. So, so other can be, uh, these are the predominant uh, uh, threats in a process industry. A vessel can fail during the, due to corrosion or when it is operated above the limit. Okay. So, the other, other cases uh, can be, uh, so suppose you are, um, we are lifting a heavy equipment, some other activity is going on, now the process is running and we are doing some construction activity nearby using a heavy crane. Okay. So the crane also, uh, so the lifting operation is potentially dangerous. So the when we are lifting certain heavy equipment, suppose the crane fails and if it falls on this system, suppose there is an inlet uh, pipeline to the vessel. So are the, it assume that it, it has fallen on top of the control bar or shutdown wall. The shutdown wall will break. So it will also lead to a gas leak. Okay. So the separator, so we mean the separator and the associated components. So the separator, one thing is the separator itself might get uh, broken when an uh, equipment is uh, dropped or uh, no, uh, the associated equipment also can fail. 
So if you uh, so that can be another situation of potential failure. So all these are captured in the same Bowtie diagram. So so we are working on a project now. So there uh, there are ten threads considered for that particular facility. Pressure and the internal corrosion, external corrosion, dropped objects. That can be um, uh, adverse uh, environment which can affect or the you no. Know, uh, one of uh, peculiar case is uh, land uh, you know, getting subsided. So you might have seen some foundation develops a crack. So due to some other uh, seismic activity, your, you know, the foundation might sink. In that also, the equipment will be under uh, stress, it can fade. So that are very, very rare case. But uh, in a portrait diagram, you can represent all. Can have multiple threads. Uh, next question: uh, Human intervention is a barrier where instrumentation failed to provide its duty. Uh, only then SOP is considered as a barrier, or from the beginning. No, uh, SOP is always considered because uh, in any chemical plant uh, operate, it is, it is uh, no, always monitored in the control room. So, uh, so it, uh, the level of instrumentation uh, varies from company to company. So in some companies, there can be only one uh, instrument provided. So, and uh, in, from the field also, you get the uh, no information from the field. So, um, in the field also, mechanical gauges will be present. Uh, the field the operators also can inform control room. So it depends on the level of instrumentation, but always, uh, no, uh, we'll have. Uh, so we don't uh, uh, normally live, uh, leave it to the instrumentation alone. Of course, the instrumentation will be available, but uh, the supervisory control uh, uh, will be uh, by a human interaction. So the uh, in a many, uh, you know. Uh, major incident where, where multiple uh, scenarios are involved, always uh, the team assembles in control room and uh, uh, you know, take the situation and then they take the overall control. So always uh, SOP and human interventions are considered as a barrier. Uh, next question, uh, what is quantitative bow tie? Yeah, quantitative bow tie. Uh, in the consequence, so when we represent the consequence, so the for example, we say flash fire occurs, a situation of flash fire. So, uh, and uh, in the uh, in this uh, rectangle, you will find the uh, four uh, white color small square boxes. Okay, so in this we capture what is the risk involved. So four, as uh, we discussed a few minutes back, so four uh, the consequences are related to people, environment, asset, and reputation. So the first uh, box, white box, we give what is the risk involved uh, for people. So each company will have a risk matrix. So what is this uh, no likelihood and severity? So based on that, as uh, we have seen, risk is a two dimension uh, parameter. So it is um, multiplication of is a product of uh, probability and consequence. So based on that, the, suppose if we have a five by five matrix, so five on a scale of five for consequent and a scale of five for likelihood. So the worst case will be five multiplied by five, it can be a count of 25. Okay. So, and if it is only three by five, then it will be 15. So for each case in this consequence, we give a ranking. So we say it is a risk ranking. So that becomes a quantitative. So in the, for the consequence, we uh, give a uh, risk ranking under four categories, people, environment, asset, and uh, reputation. 
So that becomes a quantitative uh, assessment. Uh, what are the prerequisites for bow tie? Yeah, as we have seen, so the first uh, fundamental thing is to have a piping and instrumentation drawing. And then uh, we need to have the uh, operating manual and then cost and effect matrix, uh, firefighting plan, etc. Uh, do we need to uh, consider escalating factor for all the threats and control measures? Uh, should be mentioned in bow type representation. So you can mention in uh, bow tie uh, in the barrier itself. We can uh, describe. So if it is not suppose uh, assume that uh, we are considering uh, SOP or operator intervention as a barrier. Okay. So that uh, uh, it may not be very significant to have an uh, no escalation factor and control. So inflation factor control would be that you know, the operator may not be competent, the uh, operator needs to be trained, etc. So it's not very crucial. So we can uh, represent uh, those, uh, we can capture in the same barrier uh, window itself. Okay, so the um, one other important point is that as uh, we have seen, it's a graphical representation. So as we add more. Uh, uh, escalation factors and control it becomes very long so to give uh, to get a overall picture you know, it, 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 the diagram becomes very clumsy so you will not be able to see clearly so if we have many uh, you know, it's a very complex uh, uh, unit or operation we have multiple threats multiple barriers multiple escalation factors and control so to have a uh, no better uh, picture, uh, then uh, instead of capturing separately escalation factors and control, uh, we capture the key points of escalation factors and control in the barrier itself. It can the description and uh, uh, so in the software gives a different uh, options. So how many can be captured? So depending on that, so whatever the level of details we need uh, in a barrier, it can be. Uh, tailored accordingly. Uh, next question. Uh, to whom and all the bow tie should be provided for effective working? So, as we have seen, those who are involved, uh, all it can be shared with also. In some companies, they uh, paste it in the control room and in the local operator stations. So the respective bow tie, suppose there is a separate area, there are the operator homes for there, so there it, it will be displayed so people can uh, see. So another uh, usage would be that suppose uh, as we have seen, uh, what are the barriers? For example, the pressure safety wall is a barrier. On a particular day, pressure safety wall is taken for maintenance. So they, uh, in the diagram, they put a uh, no, uh, sticky note stating that this PSV is not available today, it is taken for maintenance. So the people working in that area, so everyone will know that this barrier is not available. So they take additional precautions. So that is another uh, no advantage of having this uh, graphical representation. Uh, how and where do you consider a braking system of a vehicle in a bow tie development? Yeah, uh, braking uh, system is a prevention barrier. It prevents uh, you know, the loss of control of the vehicle. Uh, next question. Um, in general, uh, we can't rely on switches for safety related function. Is it not better to use transmitters in place of switches? No, it is again uh, uh, no, uh, a particular situation. So I agree to some extent that uh, you know, transmitters are better than switches. But it may not be the case always. 
okay so the uh, transmitters uh, the, uh, nowadays so instead of switches uh, transmitters are widely used so the same function alarm function is derived from transmitter but additionally still in some plants uh, they do have uh, switches and it, it depends on your esd system so the, if the esd system is based on discrete inputs like on off uh, type uh, instrument Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, we need to have uh, switches and uh, of course um, uh, economics is also involved if uh, the transmitters are costlier than switches so if the um, unit is not very hazardous or the, then uh, if uh, switches are sufficient uh, then based on the risk absorbing capacity of the company then it is decided they agree uh, you know uh, transmitters are more relevant to us uh, but it cannot be a general statement generalized statement so transmitter also fails uh, being a safety officer who works in oil and gas domain how the concept of bow tie is useful for this uh, profession so as we have uh, uh, discussed a few minutes back so in some companies they display bow tie diagram in control room and then at uh, you know strategic locations in workshops or in field control room for all the working crew to know about uh, what are the you know risk involved and what are the barriers so what is that so they can uh, know what are the barriers in place whether the barriers are effective or not so everyone will know it's a good the graphical uh, you know, representation uh i think uh, we have addressed all questions um is there any more questions or else we can uh, wind up the session uh the assessment of this module will be on tuesday from 6:30 to 7 pm ist I think there is no more questions, sir. We can wind the session. Uh, thank you once again uh, for joining the session, everyone. Thank you, sir, for this detailed explanation of each and every uh, doubts. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, we'll wind up today's session. Thank you.